the truth about change. It doesn't matter how awesome your plan is on paper, the change happens in the execution. Your people and you need to be able to live out these hoped for results by actually doing the work. You don't know until you actually go and live it out. This is how change happens. And this is what's also connected to a key leadership skill that you need if you wanna be an effective mid-level leader. Hey there, friend, it's Stephanie Crevins, your host of the Hot Mess Hotline, where mid-level leaders learn to think like entrepreneurs. In today's conversation, we are going to talk about how can you, as a leader, make sure that you equip them to actually change, to celebrate when they do the good and right work that's required of them, also hold them accountable when they don't. You know, your team needs to know what winning looks like and how this change, this vision story that you're asking of them, what success looks like. And so you need to be able to create short-term and long-term wins for them. We're going to talk about how you can do that. Otherwise, they're going to think it's just a fad and they don't have to stick with it. Your job as a leader is to help them stick with the change when they're on board, when they're not on board. You know, this global pandemic has created massive change in a short amount of time. During this first season of the Hot Mess Hotline, I'm going to provide you with tangible leadership and management tools that you can implement right after you get done listening listening to every single episode. So you, your team, your organization can take the hard lessons that you're learning right now and emerge from this COVID-19 hot messness with even more resiliency and focus, and so that you can learn to guide your team through change, even when there isn't a global pandemic that's forced your hand. Today, we are digging into episode four of six of this season, where we're going to dive into the eight steps that you need to take every single time to lead your team through change. And we're going to do that by pulling in an expert, John Cotter, in his book and article called Leading Change, and my experience working with clients across the country, combining those two levels of learning so that you can learn from us and move forward. Right now, you need tools to make sure that you're taking the awesome things that you're learning from this situation, making sure they stick, but then also taking the lessons learned from the weaknesses that have been revealed in your business and get those fixed moving forward too. All right, let's do this. I started working with this national nonprofit that happened just to be a membership association in 2019, did some really great work with a specific department of theirs that was responsible for implementing a new business model within the organization and with all of their member chapters. As you can imagine, all of their member chapters had one way of interacting with national headquarters, and it takes some patience and grace to get them to interact in a different way with a new kind of support and a higher level of accountability for living out their brand experience with their members at the local level. I will tell you, on paper, it was an awesome plan. And as we started to live it out together, we soon saw kind of the missing missing spots in the plan, the missing gaps of logic, if you will. And so that's what my work was with their team. There were six of us and every month we met to walk through, all right, what's working well, what's not working well, where do you all need to step up your game so that you can serve your chapters even more effectively? What are you realizing that you thought you knew, but you don't really know what skills you need to learn? Here's the truth about change. It doesn't matter how awesome your plan is on paper, the change happens in the execution. Your people and you need to be able to live out these hoped for results by actually doing the work, by experimenting with new processes, by getting new resources, which is either learning new skills, you might need more money than you thought you did, you might need more time than you thought you do, You might even need new or different people to make the change happen. You don't know until you actually go and live it out. This is how change happens. And this is what's also connected to a key leadership skill that you need if you want to be an effective mid-level leader. And I'm going to pull this from the Leadership Challenge, which are these two authors, these um, Kuzis and Posner. They're these two professors out of a university in California. They've been studying leadership for 30 years across the globe, 
across time, across sectors, and across people. And they've been studying, why would you follow somebody? I mean, it's a very simple question, but it has very deep, complex answers. And routinely, what they have found in their work, and, and of course, it's evolved a bit, but it keeps coming back to core themes. What they found in their work is that People follow other people, i.e. leaders, because they do five main things. Number one is they model the way. So they live out the values that they say they want from other people. And this is deeply embedded in how we create change. And as you listen to all six episodes, you're going to hear these five exemplary practices reflected in change initiatives. I'm a huge fan of this work. The book is called The Leadership Challenge. Get it if you haven't read it, but it's fantastic. So number one is they model the way. They live out the values and they celebrate those who live out those values too, or the vision story, if you will. They inspired a shared vision. So they bring people together routinely around a shared, positive, compelling future that everyone gets to co-create together. They challenge the status quo, which I think is what we think of as change management. That's not what it takes to create change, just to challenge what has been. It's certainly a piece of it, but it's not the only piece of it. Then they enable others to act. They share the work. And friends, one of the things that I work with with my leaders that I'm coaching that they really struggle with is they don't know how to delegate. They don't know how to share the work. They either hoard too much of it and they complain that their people aren't taking on enough of it or they delegate too loosely and so they're not able to get the results that their team needs because everyone just gets to do whatever they want. And then the fifth is they celebrate with heart. And you heard that reflected in our last session and you'll hear that reflected today is we have to celebrate What is going right? What is working well? What does winning look like? So as a leader, make sure that you are allowing people to actually do the work that you want them to do, right? We want to get them on board. Well, if we want to get them on board, allow them to be in it with us, to wrestle around with the hard stuff. Here are some reasons why you may not be seeing the change from people that you wish, even though they tell you they're on board and you believe them, right? They want to be on board, but there's external obstacles that are getting in their way. Here's number one, and you're not going to like it. And this is why I have no friends, but your fear or ego is telling you that you're needed more than you actually are to get the work done. You've got to learn to discern the difference between my people don't quite have the skills to do it And you as a leader are getting in the way because your ego is telling you, you know more than them. You can get it done faster than them. Because you're the manager, you should do this. Because you're the manager, you shouldn't give them this piece of work. None of that is probably true. I don't know. You know your team better than I do. But the reality is, is oftentimes our egos get in the way of sharing the work. Or maybe for your team, they have other bosses that are discouraging the change that you wish to see. You've got to deal with that. As a leader, you've got to deal with other bosses getting in the way of of them taking on more work. Sometimes our people can't do the change that they say that they want because they just lack the skills and training. They lack the know-how of how to actually make it happen. So what that tells me is that your people need learning and development plans. Connect that to your change initiatives. That's where the magic happens. And sometimes there's just obstacles obstacles to change that happen because change is messy and complex. Like information isn't flowing in the right ways. You've got relationships uh, within or outside of the organization that are bad, that are stopping the work from getting done. There's silos within your organization that stop work and info from from getting to the right places. So there's, there's multiple different types of obstacles to change. If you're hearing from your people that they can't get the information or action that they need from other departments, This is where you as a manager, you as a mid-level leader need to step in and help break down some of those silos, break down some of those walls, discover what's stopping the change somewhere else so that your team can do the magic that they need to do. And so as a mid-level leader, I want you to think about how can you use your political and formal power to remove barriers from other departments? Do the self-reflection necessary to see if you're actually holding them up. Get feedback from them. Ask them, you know, how am I stopping you from doing your best work? How am I stopping you from getting on board? 
And if necessary, and I think it's always necessary, I have one, get a coach to be that neutral observer to help you understand your shortcomings. Get them training, invest in them. If they're willing to be on board with you, the company needs to invest in them to keep them engaged and to help them level up their game. If you've chosen a vision that gives you goosebumps, that gets you a little scared about the possibilities, right? Like oftentimes your tummy quakes when you think about it, that's a good thing. But that probably means that it's a little out of you and your team's reach. So you need to learn how to, how to accomplish that vision. You need to learn, you need to learn what you don't know. Because right now you're at a place where you don't know what you, what you don't know. You need to bring in other voices and experts and technical learning to help bridge the gap. And that will get you propelled in moving forward. As a mid-level leader, you might need to assert yourself to get the bureaucracy changed to get the process changed so that you all can do what you need to do. It might be an organizational structure issue. It might be the rules um, that worked 10 years ago don't work now. You might need to update processes, but there's something about the bureaucracy and the way we do it around her that's stopping you guys in your tracks. And then also thinking about managing up in a new way so your boss understands the obstacles that your people are facing and can also help clear the way for the change. So manage up, manage down, manage your peers to remove these obstacles, which are another word for resistance to the change. Use your title so that you can create change for your team so you can keep your team engaged. And hopefully you can use your influence skills to bring your boss and your peers along with your team as well. All right, friends, that's what you need to do to make sure that you can equip your people to actually move forward. Get them training, use your political power to remove barriers, and see success in your organization. This season of the Hot Mess Hotline is brought to you by my Change Management Crash Course. This program is for the busy mid-level leader who needs to pivot out of this COVID-19 hot mess by creating new business results with an even stronger team. Go to changecrashcourse.com. Don't wait to become the pro troublemaker you've always wanted to be. All right, let's dig into hashtag winning. So oftentimes what slows down or pauses change is our people don't know what winning looks like. We don't have clear enough goals. We don't celebrate when we're winning together. And so that doesn't keep us motivated and engaged to do the work to continue. Because if you're working on a vision story that is hard and complex and and scares you a little bit, you're going to run into resistance. It's just a fact of life. But in order to keep keep going on that yellow brick road, as we talked about in the last episode, in order to keep going towards that vision story, folks need to know what success looks like. They need something to latch on to when the work gets really, really hard. So your job as a leader is to make sure that you name success at every six month mark and not just success, not just like a yay way to go us. It's what are significant goals that you're meeting every six months and celebrate those with your people. So you're going to have your 10-year vision story, right? Like the thing that's just out of your arm's reach that you're working towards. From there, you're going to create your three-year plan to get you there. You're going to have two-year goals. And then you're going to set one-year goals. And then you're going to set success markers every six months. You are going to celebrate success every six months with your people in small and in big ways. You know, some people want to celebrate in different ways, but at every six months, I need you to be bringing in some kind of cake or donuts or pastries so that people know that you guys are on the right track. And only, doing it, only do it if they are meeting those success markers every six months. Don't celebrate just to celebrate for celebrate's sake because then it makes it superficial. It makes it like a fad. The point here is you have to be willing to hold people accountable, to hit those markers every six months, they have to do it and then you have to celebrate it. And so when I talk about celebration, yes, donuts are important and maybe because I just, I'm a little hungry right now, but what's really important is that you recognize the people that are putting in the hard work to make those 
to make those winning markers happen. You're celebrate them, celebrating them for living out the values. You're giving promotions of some sort or increased responsibility of some sort because they are bringing in change and they're bringing in success to the organization. There are so many different ways to celebrate within our organizations. And of course you want it to fit within your culture. There's no one right way to party, but you have to make sure that you publicly acknowledge the people that are making the real shit happen. They are lining up their actions, their work plans, their six month goals or yearly goals with that 10 year vision. Don't celebrate to celebrate because again, that's just, that's, that's superficialness that tells them that, oh, this isn't going to really last if you're just creating excuses to tell me I did a good job. You have to celebrate the hard work that is making those goals happen. That is making those benchmarks happen six months, one year, 18 months, 24 year, 24 months, et cetera, et cetera. That is your job as a leader is to make sure people feel rewarded in the ways that are important to them for that good work, for the good work that lines up with the 10-year vision story. Don't just celebrate good work. You have to celebrate good work that aligns with the 10-year vision story. And I'm sure you have many great examples of what is culturally appropriate for your organization. But here's what I want you to take with you today and think about for the rest of your workday. Just like with communication, I need you to think about how are you celebrating the good work that aligns with the goals and the vision story seven times. That's seven. It's a magical number on purpose, but it works. How are you celebrating when people are hitting milestones, benchmarks, KPIs, OKRs, whatever label you use in your organization, seven times? That's the key to getting some of this change to stick. All right, friends, that's our conversation for today. We talked about celebrating small wins, getting those changes to stick, but then also making sure you're creating ways for uh, your people to do the work. Don't try to take on all this change initiative and all, this, all these change initiatives and all this work by yourself. You have to make sure you spread accountability to your entire team. And as a mid-level leader, you've got to remove the roadblocks so they can actually do that work. All right. My one last request of you, my friend, subscribe wherever you're listening, share with another leader at work, and sign up for weekly straightforward leadership tools at stephaniecrevins.com forward slash blog. All of these options and how to get John Cotter's book are in the show notes. We'll talk soon. Mm-hmm.